Recording by Christopher Smith Because of your unbelief Then came the disciples to Jesus apart, and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Matthew 17, 19 and 20 When the Lord Jesus sent his disciples into different parts of Palestine, he endued them with a double power, that of casting out unclean spirits, and that of healing all sickness and all infirmity. Matthew 10, 1 he did the same for the seventy who came back to him with joy, saying, Lord, even the spirits are subject unto us through thy name. Luke ten seventeen. On the day of the transfiguration, while the Lord was still upon the mountain, a father brought his son, who was possessed with a demon, to his disciples, beseeching them to cast out the evil spirit. But they could not. When, after Jesus had cured the child, the disciples asked him why they had been unable to do it themselves as in other cases, he answered them, Because of your unbelief. It was then their unbelief and not the will of God which had been the cause of their defeat. In our days divine healing is very little believed in, because it has almost entirely disappeared from the Christian church. One may ask the reason, and here are two answers which have been given. The greater number think that miracles, the gift of healing included, should be limited to the time of the primitive church, that their object was to establish the first foundation of Christianity, but that from that time circumstances have altered. Other believers say unhesitatingly that if the church has lost these gifts, it is by her own fault, it is because she has become worldly, that the Spirit acts but feebly in her. It is because she has not remained in direct and habitual relation with the full power of the unseen world, but that if she were to see anew springing up within her men and women who live the life of faith and of the Holy Spirit, entirely consecrated to their God, she would see again the manifestation of the same gifts as in former times. Which of these two opinions coincides the most with the word of God? Is it by the will of God that the gifts of healing have been suppressed, or is it rather man who is responsible for it? Is it the will of God that miracles should not take place? Will he in consequence of this no longer give the faith which produces them? Or again, is it the church which has been guilty of lacking faith? What saith the Scripture? The Bible does not authorize us, either by the words of the Lord or his apostles, to believe that the gifts of healing were granted only to the early times of the church. On the contrary, the promise which Jesus made to the apostles when he gave them instructions concerning their mission shortly before his ascension appear to us applicable to all times. Mark 16, 15-18 Paul places the gift of healing among the operations of the Holy Spirit. James gives a precise command on this matter without any restriction of time. The entire scriptures declare that these graces will be granted according to the measure of the Spirit and of faith. It is also alleged that at the outset of each new dispensation God works miracles, that it is his ordinary course of action, but it is nothing of the kind. Think of the people of God in the former dispensation, in the time of Abraham, all through the life of Moses, in the exodus from Egypt, under Joshua, in the time of the judges and of Samuel, under the reign of David and other godly kings up to Daniel's time, during more than a thousand years miracles took place. But, it is said, miracles were much more necessary in the early days of Christianity than later. But what about the power of heathenism even in this day, wherever the gospel seeks to combat it? It is impossible to admit that miracles should have been more needful for the heathen in Ephesus, Acts 19, 11 and 12, than for the heathen of Africa in the present day? And if we think of the ignorance and unbelief which reign even in the midst of the Christian nations, are we not driven to conclude that there is a need for manifest acts of the power of God to sustain the testimony of believers and to prove that God is with them? Besides, among believers themselves, how much of doubt, how much of weakness there is! 
how their faith needs to be awakened and stimulated by some evident proof of the presence of the Lord in their midst. One part of our being consists of flesh and blood. It is therefore in flesh and blood that God wills to manifest His presence. In order to prove that it is the church's unbelief which has lost the gift of healing, let us see what the Bible says about it. Does it not often put us on our guard against unbelief, against all which can estrange and turn us from our God? Does not the history of the church show us the necessity of these warnings? Does it not furnish us with numerous examples of backward steps, of world-pleasing, in which faith grew weak in the exact measure in which the spirit of the world took the upper hand? For such faith is only possible to him who lives in the world invisible. Until the third century the healings by faith in Christ were numerous, but in the centuries following they became more infrequent. Do we not know from the Bible that it is always unbelief which hinders the mighty working of God? Oh, that we could learn to believe in the promises of God! God has not gone back from His promises. Jesus is still He who heals both soul and body. Salvation offers us even now healing and holiness, and the Holy Spirit is always ready to give us some manifestations of His power. Even when we ask why this divine power is not more often seen, he answers us, because of your unbelief. The more we give ourselves to experience personally sanctification by faith, the more we shall also experience healing by faith. These two doctrines walk abreast. The more the Spirit of God lives and acts in the soul of believers, the more will the miracles multiply by which he works in the body. Thereby the world can recognize what redemption means. End of chapter 2